This is Arkies in the Beltway, a look at national politics and the Arkansans influencing the discussions. I'm Alex Thomas, Washington correspondent for the Arkansas Democrat Gazette, reporting from the nation's capital. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Arkies in the Beltway for the week of January 28, 2024. Last week on Capitol Hill, rather low key. The House of Representatives away from the Capitol, the Senate considering multiple nominations, but Arkansas's two senators staying busy. Senator Tom Cotton of Little Rock leading a legislative effort addressing cybersecurity and threats to the nation's agriculture and food systems. The Farm and Food Cybersecurity Act would mandate that the Secretary of Agriculture conduct studies every two years on relevant vulnerabilities to activities involving food production, processing, distribution, and consumption. Those reviews will look into the scope of attacks and how private and public entities can prevent and recover from these incidents. New York Democrat Kirsten Gillibrand joining Cotton in helping put forward the Senate bill. There is companion legislation in the House. Senator John Bozeman celebrating the work of school choice advocates. Bozeman of Rogers speaking at a reception last Wednesday at the Capitol, recognizing National School Choice Week and the advocates pushing for increased options in K-12 education. We're the tip of the spear, but these things don't get done without the grassroots. So thank you for being here. Thank you for all you do where you're at. Members of Congress have invited school choice advocates from across the country to Capitol Hill in past years during National School Choice Week to highlight their efforts. South Carolina Senator Tim Scott leading Senate Republicans in introducing a resolution commemorating the occurrence Bozeman and Cotton signed on as co-sponsors. Scott ties his support of school choice to his upbringing in North Charleston, South Carolina. I went to four different elementary schools by the fourth grade because there's a transient nature in poverty and Understanding the power of school choice today as a legislature, legislator and looking back at my mom and realizing that the struggles and the challenges that she faced, the frustration of coming home, sitting at a kitchen table by yourself and asking yourself, where is the opportunity for my kid? Bozeman's appearance coinciding with increased interest in school choice among Arkansans. Part of the LEARNS Act, Governor Sarah Huckabee Sanders' education overhaul effort, includes the creation of a voucher program to cover private and homeschool education costs. Bozeman making note of the governor's priorities. Arkansas is leading the way in this. Uh, Governor Sanders is doing a tremendous job. State Democrats and education organizations have argued the educational freedom accounts will divert funds from public schools as the state continues phasing in the program. Sanders and Arkansas's congressional delegation siding with Texas in that state standoff with the federal government. The U.S. Supreme Court last Monday ruling that the Border Patrol can cut razor wire that Texas placed at a section of the U.S.-Mexico border, with Texas hoping the work would curb illegal entry into the United States. Texas Governor Greg Abbott refusing to comply with that ruling. Sanders and 24 other members of the Republican Governors Association signing a statement of solidarity supporting Abbott arguing Texas has the right to do something and the Biden administration has not done enough to enforce immigration laws. When contacted by the Democrat Gazette on the matter, all six members of Arkansas's congressional delegation arguing the Biden administration needs to step up when it comes to immigration. Senator Cotton says the current situation reflects poorly on the president when it comes to border security. President Biden has kept our border wide open for three years now to the point where last month we had more than 300,000 migrants crossing the border. I mean, if that were played out on an annual basis, it would be way more than the population of Arkansas in a single year. The Biden administration proposed a supplemental security request in October, which included $14 billion for border security. The White House and a Senate coalition have been holding talks for weeks on a possible deal concerning immigration policy. Cotton says he's hopeful whatever is put forward will force the Biden administration to make significant steps in securing the southern border. An update from something mentioned during last week's episode, Senator Bozeman traveled to West Virginia last week to join Senator Shelley Moore Capito for events related to the next farm bill. Bozeman, the top Republican on the Senate Agriculture, Nutrition and Forestry Committee, has held roundtable talks around the country to understand what needs to be part of the next legislative package. The sweeping proposal covering agriculture, nutrition and rural development programs, the Congressional Research Service estimates spending associated with the next farm bill will approach one and a half trillion dollars. Capito, speaking alongside Senate Republican leaders, says the farm bill is important for small states 
like West Virginia. I want to thank Senator Bozeman for coming to talk about an important part of the American economy, something that I think sometimes gets taken for granted in certain parts of the country, and even in a small state like mine. It's a big economic driver. Agriculture is, employs a lot of people, feeds a lot of people, and uh, we learned a lot about the research and development that's been going on at our educational uh, uh, institutions. Congress agreed last year to extend the 2018 Farm Bill through this September as negotiations surrounding new texts continue. A look ahead of the week to come, the House will return to Capitol Hill on Monday after the chamber's week away from Washington, D.C. The Senate will next meet Tuesday. The Senate Judiciary Committee will host social media leaders on Wednesday for a hearing focused on child safety online. Senator Cotton serves on that committee. Cotton was part of a bipartisan group of senators who introduced legislation last year that would require social media platforms to take steps to prevent users younger than 13 and make parental approval necessary for teens from the ages of 13 to 17. And that'll do it for this edition of Arkies in the Beltway for the week of January 28, 2024. You can stay up to date with all news involving Arkansas at ArkansasOnline.com. You can get in touch with me on social media. My handle is at Alex House Thomas. I'm Alex Thomas, and this has been Arkies in the Beltway. Thanks for listening.